What's up, everyone? This is Tatum. I'm back with another episode of Flowers. To people that's new to my channel, this is my segment where I like to give classic albums or albums I feel like deserve appreciation their flowers just for, you know, being great. So today I'm discussing an album that's just hit its 10th anniversary. It's kind of crazy that this album is 10 years old. I could like still remember this album being played everywhere like it was yesterday. Songs from this album will probably still be played forever. But today I'm going to be discussing Adele's 21. 21, I think, is like the ultimate breakup album. <laughs> like, like I think that's I think that's why I was so successful. I think that's I mean, besides the music being great, I think that it's very relatable because everyone can everyone's been through a breakup and the thing she discussed on this album is like everything that every person on the planet has went through already. Uh it came just after a breakup. She her attended she attended for her second album to be more upbeat and more uplifting, but the breakup happened right as she was going to record. She got a new spark of inspiration. So that's why the album sound the way it sounds. And this album is like the total uh, anti sophomore jinx. Like if nineteen was I think nineteen is a great album. I don't know if it's classic, but I think it's a I think it's close too. But this album is like solidified classic. It's it's gonna it's hard for her to probably even do something of the standard of this. Not in a bad way. It's just that like with this at the time that this album came out in and the impact that this album had is just second to none. Uh, so I just wanted to touch on a couple things, go through a couple things real fast, the highlights of the album, and you know just discuss like what the album meant to me and. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's get into it. Before I get started, though, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We just hit 400 subscribers. So the next goal is 500. Then the goal after that, well, the goal is a road to a thousand. So let's just keep going, keep spreading the word. And, you know, I appreciate everybody who subscribed and who looks at the videos. So 21. 21 starts with, like, it's the only 11 songs on here. I love when albums are just, uh, 10 to 11 songs bro when you get the 10 to 11 songs like you really can't go wrong some most of the time i know it's people who went wrong but you can only it's it leaves little room for error and i think every song in this album is is just great so the album starts with rolling in a deep rolling in the deep and that song always gave me that old school gospel feel i don't know why like when the drums hit and the background vocals that she does herself, I thought it, it sounds very gospel. Like it, it's reminiscent of like a like a song Aretha Franklin Aretha Franklin would sing to me. I know I'm not comparing her to Aretha Franklin in any way. I'm just saying that it's it gives me that feel. To me, it's one of those like to start off the breakup album. It starts off with like I had enough kind of songs like to the left kind of records. Uh, in an interview, Adele said, uh, "This is the quote." She said, uh, "It's like." get the fuck out of my house instead of begging him to come back like you could tell like it's like the bravado and what's the hook on there uh we could have had it all rolling in deep you had my heart inside your hands and you played it to the beat the hooks for one on this album is just like some of the greatest hooks i ever heard in my life like these rolling in deep is gonna be a song we hear forever <laughs> like it's gonna be one of those songs we hear well i hear the rest of my life my kids are gonna hear it their kids are gonna hear it. it's just it's like one of those ones that it's just timeless so to start an album off with that like usually the intros usually the intros are just like that it's just the introduction and you know but for your intro to be like one of the biggest songs of all time, it says a lot. So next song we got is uh, Rumor Has It, which I love this fucking song. It's like, I love when uh, it's like Adele popping her shit in the way. <laughs> like it, it's one of those records where like it's it's a hard, it's the hard drums. Again, it has the choir feel to it. Like, ooh. Like, it has that feel to it. Also, I could be wrong, even though you could look at it like, you know, you could look at the way you look at it on the sub, on the just surface level. But when I hear Rumor Has It, I get this idea that, like, you you could take it as, like, Adele popping her shit to a guy and, like, for instance, taking another girl's man in a way. And Rumor Has It, she don't have your love anymore. But to me, when I look, listening back to it, I got a new, like, light on it. And it makes me feel like she's speaking from the perspective of the girl who her guys with that she like you know how on uh someone like you i'm gonna get to that but she like 
she talks about him moving on and with another person. I think rumor has it could be taken as the song, like she's speaking as the other girl that he's moved on to. Like rumor has it, he don't have your love anymore. Rumor has it, and she has a line like, uh, "She's half your age" or some shit like that. And the guy that she was dating, he was like ten years older than her at the time that you know they were dating. So like it just that's just one of the ways I took the song now and today in 2021. Like I was like, oh. Wait, maybe she's writing from the perspective, like, cause if you listen to it, I'm pretty sure everybody heard this. The album's fucking more than diamond by now, <laughs> but like, I, it just hit me in a new way. You know how you listen to music and you get all different ideas every time you listen to it. It's one of those. Songs. I was like, wait, is she talking about? Is she speaking from the other woman's perspective? Uh, it was just a thought. Go back and listen to it, and you tell me what you think. But I think it's about that. Just and if it's and if it is that, that's even dope. That makes the song even more doper. Like. Because in a sense, if you think about the con, the construct of the album, right, it's a breakup album. Why would she be talking about, why would she just so randomly just takes another girl's guy? Like in the midst, I could be wrong. I could be just like making this whole idea up in my head, but that's just the idea I got from it. Um, and then again, the turning tables, I think it's one of the best records on the album. It's one of those records I didn't listen to a lot when it initially dropped, but you know, throughout the years, it became one of my favorite songs on the album. And I just, I love Adele on bare minimum beats. Well, tracks records. <laughs> I said tracks like she a rapper, but I really love Adele on bare minimum uh, records. Like I love. I think that's where she really shines and you know i could be i'm just talking shit but i think that's where she really shines like just a guitar or guitar and piano but no drums like she really shines like you know rumor has it's dope and you know those hard hitting drums she does it's another song she does it on uh he won't go i think but it's when she gets on them bare minimum tracks and you can hear her vocal ability and you hear her pain i think that's like I think that's her pocket. It's another one on 19 that's like it's like very bare minimum. It's one of the one of the dope records off 19. Uh yeah, Best for Last off 19. That's the one she goes like like it, I think her vocal ability, it's a line on that song that like the way she does her vocals on that 19 song is like always catches me every time I listen to it. But back to my point of turning tables, I think her vocal ability is very amazing that's why like i, I would love to go to adele show and the uh, visuals i see from a show is like literally her just standing there it's like reminiscence of an old singer who don't have to do all the glitz and glamour and dance all around the stage it's just like my voice is the reason you're here so let me let me just give you my voice one of my favorite parts of the song is like uh so i won't let you close enough to hurt me no i won't rescue you uh just to desert me i can't give you the heart that you think you gave me uh, I thought that was I thought that was kind of dope. And then she goes on to say, like, uh, under harness skies, I see you where love is lost. You're the ghost is found. I braved a hundred storms to leave you as hard as you try. No, I would never be knocked down. I thought it was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, that's some like gut wrenching poetry. And just the, you know, a lot of the songs on the album bear the same subject matter. It's the breakup record is all the heartache you go through. But those lyrics right there, man, those was like. It's just it's just poetry. Uh, don't you remember? And that's another that's another one of those songs I just think is it's just dope, man. Just the story she's telling in the album. I like this song because it also discusses in a way her mistakes, like that she's it's just like a self reflecting, uh, self aware kind of song. Like I know this album is all about me <laughs> shitting on the guy that I was with, but. I also made my mistakes in the relationship as well, and I don't think you can have a breakup album without that. I don't think you could go through a breakup without having those kind of thoughts as well. What is the line she say? Uh, what is the hook? It was like, don't you remember? Don't you remember the reasons you loved me before? Baby, please remember me once more. Is like, she has. She said in an interview in The Sun, she said, you know when you forget why you love someone? Uh... I was just thinking about how my entire life, how my entire body would shiver if my ex touched me and say hello. It's sad when you can't remember why you love someone, why you loved someone. And I thought like that song sums that up perfectly. Just like, damn, how do we get here? I, I remember like we used to be the greatest, like and things of that nature. So I just think, uh, don't you remember? Is also one of those sleepers on the album that don't get enough recognition because the singles are just so big. But I think that's another song on the album that deserves some light. And that goes into one of the biggest songs on the album, uh, <laughs> Set Fire. And, you know, that last run she does on that, 
uh song is just god level goddess level however you want to say it again that's probably one of the one of the greatest hits of all time we're going to be hearing that that song for like the rest of our lives rest of our kids life grandkids their great great grandkids like that song is going to be covered and done a million times over and it's just amazing writing and a great story uh the just look at the hook like i know it's huge and you know sometimes with great records and big hooks we kind of like we kind of dismiss how great it actually is like she said but i set fire to the rain watch it pour, watch it poured as i touch your face will it burn while i cry because i heard it screaming out your name and then she says it again it was like because i knew it it was the last time like man <laughs> like adele whatever the producers uh I know the producers on this album, but the way they came together and just gave this album backstory, a lot of the songs, like, from what I've read, when she came in the studios, like, a lot of producers were just feeding off the energy she had and how she was coming in crying from having a conversation with her ex or just down bad coming in from her ex and created... It kind of reminds me of Back to Black in a way, but... Uh, which is one of her inspirations, just in general. I read that about Adele, uh, Amy Winehouse, but it's just... Man, like... Like, because sometimes you can have these, how can I say it? Music is really great when the actual music matches the the writing and vocals, right? Like, because sometimes you can have these great vocals and great lyrics and everything, but the music doesn't match it. I think the soundtrack that they put behind her propelled this to, like, the heights that she couldn't even imagine. You know what I mean? So, I just love that song. And then, uh, He Won't Go, I think that's a Rick Rubin track. And that song is about, like, how both people won't leave the relationship even when they know it's not healthy and uh they're both scared to take that risk and the fears haunt them as as well so i thought that was a like it's literally touching on every emotion that you can have during and going through a breakup yeah i know that meant the same thing <laughs> and i just love the percussion on there especially when the hook comes in like because it starts out as just like this slow building like their minimum track and then the the percussion and stuff comes in on the hook and it kind of you could tell rick rubin you can tell Rick Rubin comes from a hip hop background, but she what she say? Uh, but I won't go. I can't do it on my own. If this ain't love, then what is? I'm willing to take the risk. Like again, straight to the point lyrics, uh, straight to your heart lyrics. Everybody's probably felt that before, and I think again that's that's the that's the best part about the album to me. Uh, just how relatable it is. Take it all. Uh, that song just makes me sad. <laughs> Like, you can hear the pain in her voice. You can hear her tears. Take it all with my love. Like, what she, what else she say? Uh, don't look back at this uh, crumbling fool. Like, even the word choices. And she's, she's painting pictures that put you right there. And it just puts you right there. Like, what's the song she had on 20, uh, 25 uh, with the video? Uh, probably the only video she had. Hello? Like, <laughs> like I, I picture every song on here just like an interaction with herself or with her ex. Like, it just puts me right in the, the visual of the whole thing. And I think that's just amazing in itself. Uh, I'll Be Waiting is probably the most upbeat song on the album. Uh, it's when you look back at your ex and you realize, well, not realize, but, you know, I would assume like it's like looking back at your ex and then, oh, maybe it wasn't so bad. Maybe we could do this over. Maybe if I didn't make this mistake, maybe you didn't make the mistake. Maybe, maybe I could do things differently and maybe it could work out better, but it doesn't. <laughs> uh, it's the lines like, uh, I'll be waiting for you when you're ready to love me again. I put my hands up. I'll do everything different. I'll be better for you. Like that. Uh, and then the, like the the verse is like dun, 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 I was a child like it gives again it gives me that gospel feel you ain't gotta look it up I got it uh, it gives me that gospel feel again it reminds me of a song Aretha Franklin would sing like just the whole backing and the way that the way she does her background vocals and the way the way it makes it sound like a gospel feel like she's right in church singing about her lost love like in a way it's kind of like. I don't want to use the wrong words, but kind of like a, a begging thing at a way. Like, I do everything different. I'll be better for you. I'll be waiting for you. You could turn those into a gospel record. <laughs> like, if you didn't know what the song was about, you, I'll put my hands up. I'll be everything different. I'll be better for you. I just think that's a dope record. That's one of my favorites as well. Another, That's one of those songs that I think it was a single, but I hear that in like commercials and movies, like in TV shows. Uh another one i just love that song we go into uh one and only it's a cool record uh love song that's the uh the 
the Cure remake. And I think uh, Henrik Rubin did a great job with, you know, sometimes with covers, you love the, the original so much that it has to be really good for, the cover has to be really good for me to like appreciate the song. And I thought she did a good job, especially with her vocal ability and how it was so stripped away. It's very deep record. And to go into the last record, Someone Like You, which I think is the perfect closing track for this album, I think probably, <laughs> I'll probably be speaking out of turn here, but I think it's probably the greatest breakup song of all time. Like, I think Someone Like You is, it, it's, it's, imagine how many people listen to Someone Like You <laughs> going through a breakup. Like, it, it, it sums up everything, like, everything that she pleaded and said throughout the album is summed up in someone like you uh to me it uh it's like the song when it's like officially over like she she sees the guy that she was with with another person and he's moved on so maybe it's time for her to move on i heard you settle down you found a girl and you're married now like this is like and i don't even think, think she probably went through this phase yet in her actual breakup but the fact that she she touched on it in this is it's just dope and again probably one of the greatest hooks of all time <laughs> like period like i know i've been saying that for three songs but you got to realize how big these records are and how great these records are what's the hook on someone like you never mind i'll find someone like you uh never mind i'll find someone like you i wish nothing but the best for you too don't forget me i beg i remember you said sometimes it lasts in love and sometimes it hurts instead like and she ends the song with that like i think that's the perfect the last word she says on the whole song is sometimes it lasts in love and sometimes you hurt instead or sometimes it hurts instead and i think that's the perfect the perfect last words the perfect hook uh and you can hear her pain like at the end when she does it the hook i think twice at the end she like you can hear her pain in that man like i always listen to him like damn how did she even how did she even do that like you know how sometimes shit could be so painful you can't even speak or say the words like she sung that shit like it was like she meant it <laughs> like, like you can hear her her turmoil and everything that was just embodied in that and that's that's just real art man that's what makes it that's what makes real art great, man. Just the relatability, the honesty, and things of that nature. But, um, yeah. Let's get into best songs. Best songs, I'm going to go with, obviously, Someone Like You. <laughs> Rumor Has It and Set Fire to the Rain. Worst song, I'm going to go with uh, One and Only. It's just not a bad song. I don't think it's a bad song on this album. I just think that compared to everything else, like, this album is pretty stacked. And, you know, that song kind of... It kind of washes away at the wayside compared to everything else with the album. That's no disrespect to the song at all. Favorite line, she says, uh, I have no story to be told, but I heard one on you. Now I'm going to make your head burn. Think of me in the depths of your despair. Make a home down there as mine sure won't be shared. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Adele, Adele kicking up rocks. <laughs> kicking up dust, giving a motherfuck. She was like, she was like going in on dude. Uh <laughs> In closing, though, let me just say happy 10th anniversary to 21. I think this is, from record sales alone, this album is, she's probably like the highest selling female solo artist off this album. I remember this album been on the charts. I forgot when it went off, but it was years before it went off the charts. Diamond, uh, all the singles, multi-platinum, uh, and that's just a uh, accolade kind of thing. But as far as the music itself, I think, again, I think it's the the, the best breakup album of all time. It, it sums up everything that you could possibly go through in a breakup. Uh, also, man, well, <laughs> I'm not even going to get into it. But, like, I love how, like, females can be, like, females can be, like, openly honest and go down to the in-depths of hurtness of breakups and love that guys don't really do singing-wise. Like, we get, like, Marvin Gaye, Hear My Dear, but that's probably it. We get, like, Song for Jane. I remember Maroon 5 did that. And they're not the only ones, but I'm just things that's coming to my mind but the way that she like man she broke down everything that you could have went through in a breakup and awesome production awesome vocals awesome songwriting it deserves everything that it got and still so like even going back and listening to it this week i was like man this is like it's just great music man like great music and it gotta it gotta be kind of tough when a uh what a has three albums now. It got to be tough when an artist hits their, like, this got to be a hard one to go against. Like, 
every day like you go in this like 25 was cool but it, it was no match for 21 and like it got to be tough to go in the studio and like after and be like man i gotta make i made 21 yeah like she made 21 that's like mike making thriller like she made 21 like that album is huge bro <laughs> like that that album is just huge like in every aspect it's a modern day classic like it was a modern it is a modern day classic so i just wanted to give flowers to adele just for uh just for making this out man like i know like like i said before music is dope when it's the most honest and it's the most relatable so i think she knocked this one out the fucking park and it's it's just, it's hard to find an album better than this. <laughs> like it's hard to find an album to match up against, this, especially a love album and breakup album. Like it's just it's unmatched. So flowers for Adele Twenty One. I'm Tatum. Peace. <laughs>